Good evening and welcome everyone to uh, Word Up here at Bright City Church. My name's Ian Fawkes. I'm pastor here. I'm with my friend and fellow pastor Akin, Pastor Akin Orison, who's on the leadership here at Bright City. Great to have you, Pastor Akin. Thanks for being with us again as we continue our study of Mark's gospel. How are you doing? Oh. I'm very well, Pastor Ian. Thank you very much for uh, having me on, on this uh, program again. And good evening to all of our listeners. It's, I'm just so excited about what we're going to be looking at today. Yes, welcome <laughs> if you're on Facebook Live. Also, welcome if you're watching on YouTube. And we are also on the podcast. So welcome if you're listening to the podcast, Word Up. Interesting, we heard this morning, didn't we, Pastor Akin, um, Joel and Canal. Joel was preaching a word about the wise and foolish builders and yes. um, very apt for, you know, word up, in fact, because the, the wise builder hears the words, listen to the words of God, Jesus's words, and puts them into practice. Yes. And that's what word, word up is all about. You know, we want to hear, listen to the word of God and apply it to our lives. You know, it says the Absolutely. foolish builder yes. also heard the word of God, hears the word of God, but the big difference is <laughs> not putting it into practice. And, practice. Um, you know, yeah. then when the storm comes, that person, you know, is not going to make it. Um, yes. It's a good Absolutely word, wasn't amazing. it? Yes, it was a fantastic word. It was just an um, amazing uh, leading of, of service by, um, you know, younger members of our congregation absolutely brilliant it's fantastic yeah. to see them stepping out in faith and that word like you said it was a word in season it really was a word for this hour yeah. for this time as god we keep saying god is bringing us out in power and he wants us yeah. to believe in his word and trust him and step out and do what he's asking us to do amen brilliant brilliant amen. <laughs> right let's um get on to our where it towards the end of chapter four uh, from verse 35, and we're looking to get right through to the end of chapter 5 today. It's a little section that kind of goes together, so I'm going to crack straight on reading from chapter 4, verse 35. We've had, we've just heard, you know, Jesus was just telling some parables, and now we're picking up the action at verse 35. <clears throat> Excuse me. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. <coughs> A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Chapter 5. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. The man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank of the lake and were drowned. 
Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and he told and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who was subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around at the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking round to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him, except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples that were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Quite a long section there, um, so we'll do our best to, uh, to, to, to go through it. We've, um, we've just had a, a section prior to this where it was really concentrating on Jesus' teaching. It went through a number of parables, the parable of the sower, the seed, the kingdom of heaven is like, um, you know, the growing of the the, the corn and the kernels and things. And then we come into this. Now we're we're seeing the action and activity of Jesus. So we're we're seeing a full picture of the man, Jesus Christ. We see his words, his teaching and now his actions that, if you like, back up his words and um, it really follows on from what we were saying about words and actions in a way um so yeah and 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 here we see that that jesus encounters you know four different situations the 
the awful storm that, that brings great danger to the people, danger of death to the disciples, danger of swamping the boat. We see him encounter powerful demonic forces, satanic forces coming against, again, extreme danger to the people. Um, we see him encountering an incurable disease, incurable diseases, and then even death, where Jairus' daughter is dead. So we've got Jesus now moving in power, encountering almost every kind of situation that maybe humanity might face from, you know, catastrophic storms, um, incurable disease, demonic forces, and... Um, Interesting how these things are highlighted, not by accident, I don't think. Absolutely. Pastor Akin, over to you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> Pastor, we're just going to, to pray and then uh, quickly and then we um, move on. <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah. Father, we just want to thank you for this time of uh, looking into your word. It's rather, you are using your word to look into our hearts. And so we just um, still our hearts right now to receive from you, even as we're speaking and we pray for our listeners too, Lord, especially those who, uh, like the, uh, we've just mentioned some things, they might be going through some storms or they're facing some incurable illnesses or a demonic activity, whatever it might be, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, your word will be released in power today. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes Pastor. It's, it's amazing that you've rightly you've set the, the tone there where we see, I think, uh, over and above anything else that we, we might say this evening, it's just for people to be encouraged that even through the reading of the word that you've just done there, you know, it might seem like we've taken up a lot of time reading the word, but there, there is power in those words. And uh, those words are much more effective than anything that uh, you or I could say with all due respect, because That's these true. are the very words of God. So Amen. you set, you release in those words, you speak yeah. in those words out and people listening to those words. There is mm. power in those words. And the Holy Spirit is able to bring encouragement, is able to bring deliverance and healing through the words that we've just read. Because yes. these people or these situations, they're real situations that took yes. place. They're real people that had an mm. encounter with Jesus yes. in, the, in these different situations. So just for our listeners to be encouraged, you know, we, we, we might not be able to go into the depth of, um, you know, what, 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 what we've read today. But there is the, the word of itself has the power <clears throat> to bring that which you, you need right now. And it's calling it's calling all of us to draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one we're, we're, we're focusing on here. And so like, like you've rightly said, um, what we're seeing here, uh, Pastor, like you said, is that Jesus has come, you know, he's got that mandate from the from the Father to preach and teach the gospel. That's what we were reading from the beginning. And he, you know, he's faithful to that. You know, he doesn't allow anything to distract him from that. He goes everywhere. He's preaching about the kingdom. He's teaching about the kingdom. And his disciples are there with him. So they're, they're watching it everything that he's doing, everything that he's saying. And so now you see at the, at the beginning of the, the, the today's reading, he then says to them, right, let's go somewhere else now. And they're moving into, if, if you like, and he's, he's moving up a gear, isn't he? He's moving now into the demonstration of that which he has been talking about. And, um, you know, we, we, we see that first thing here where he says to them, let's go over to the other side of the lake. And we begin to see uh, a little bit of, um, you know, they, they begin to, <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting that even though they've been with the Lord, we don't know how long that they've been with the Lord at this point. But we see at the end of that um, encounter that they were afraid and amazed. And they began to say, what what manner of man is this? Who is this man? You know, we've been listening to him preaching and teaching about the kingdom. But we've now experienced something about him that we've just, we, we couldn't even, we'd never be able to fathom that. You know, we'd never be able to think about what he's just done. We've just seen him take control over nature itself. I mean, who is this person? Yeah. And I think it's an encouragement to us as well that no matter how long we've been walking with the Lord, you know, there are still going to be times when he's going to take us deeper and he's going to say, OK, let's go over here. Let's go and do this. And he's going to show us things that uh, will even amaze us to think as a wow, you know, Lord, you, you, you showed me so many different things about yourself over the years. But you just showed me something which I've, I've never seen, you know, a, a, about you before. Yeah. And um, sorry, Pastor, Ray, let's, let's, uh, I'm just going to let's take the lead of this one so that we can just follow this. But um, yes. You set the scene. He's he's the Lord of all. That's what he's saying. I am Lord of all. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Brilliant. <laughs> it's um yeah. Interesting. You know, at, at one point in as we we're looking through Mark, you said, no, I, I need to go to to the people. I'm going to go here, go here. And now we're, we're almost seeing him leaving the crowd behind each time. You know, it says leaving the crowd behind. They they went away, you know, to the other side. They went away. And but the crowd now are always going after him. <laughs> you know, he can't get away from the crowd and it's interesting he said you know because they go in the boat and it says 
I, I hadn't noticed this. There were also other boats with them. You, you imagine That's all right. these quick, the boat's going, let's follow everyone in. Yeah, you can come in my boat. Come on, let's go after him. <laughs> but I wonder what happened to those other boats when this fierce storm Dawn. came up. Can you imagine all the other yes. boats? Uh, presumably, <laughs> they were in difficulty as well. And Because yes. um, I was reading, actually, that... Um, Actually, on the Sea of Galilee, you know, these, these fierce storms can really blow up uh, because of, you know, the geography there. And, and tourists are not allowed to go onto the, onto the Sea of Galilee in small boats because <clears throat> so many, I was reading, have actually died, you know, been drowned, can you wow. believe, on, wow. on boats in, on the Sea of yes. Galilee. That's amazing. So yes. they have the big, special, you know, tourist um, boats yes. only. But, um, that so, is amazing, yes. Yeah. I Interesting. Up on that as, yes. Go on. Yeah, please, you. Just that point about the other boats that I picked up yeah. on that as well when I was reading. I thought I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, And I too. saw in, in, a, in a commentary that what had happened, they were, they were saying more or less that, um, you know, when Jesus rose up and he, he you know, he rebuked the storm, he says that uh, not only were... You know that boat that he was in, but all those other boats as well. They would have been saved as a result yeah. of his intervention. That's that. That was what the, you know, yeah. the commentator was saying. Yeah. But I hadn't Brilliant. seen that as well. They were looking other yeah. boats. Yeah, were, were could, set you, out as well. You, you, you can see see an amazing story there of all the other boats as well. But yeah, where the another point to you know where the the, the disciples said, "Don't you care? Don't you care? We're going to drown." You know, it's almost like. Um, we might think, you know, doesn't God care about the situations that we're experiencing? Storms, awful situations where we might feel very afraid or whatever. And, and we see here he does care. He mm. cares very much. And, and I mean, he immediately, in fact, you know, he would have foreknown, you know, this, this, this example, what was going to happen where he would, you know, step up and, and, and still the storm. And so, um, yes, yes, he does care. And, and, and we, yes. should, we should never think that God doesn't care. Yeah. He cares yes. so much for us. He loves us so much. He even sent his son to die for us. That's how much he cares. And we yes, should amen. never yes. accuse God of not caring. Not caring, yes. I was, I was big, picking up on that, um, Pastor, when I was, oh, the, 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 you know, the comments that we were reading, they were just talking about how, you know, right from the beginning, Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. So he's given his word, again, like what Joel was saying this morning, that, you know, or, and, and Pastor Mary in the past who said another member of our, of our leadership said, no, take God at his word. Mm. And right from the beginning, he'd set the scene. He said, let's go over to the other side. And then he says, you know, he falls asleep. And they were just talking about yeah. how he, he could have been worrying about so many different things. You know, all the, the opposition that he was facing, the, the demonic activities. You know, he could have been worrying about the men. You know, are these the right men? Have I chosen the right men? Yes. But he actually fell asleep. And they were saying that in one part of it was because he was tired because he'd been preaching and teaching all day yeah. long, so he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. But even in the midst of the storm, he didn't wake up. I mean, he would have thought the boat would have been rocking and tossed to and fro, and he didn't wake up. But amazingly enough, one of the commentators said that, you know, when as soon as the disciples came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up. And he said, it's a bit like a mother, you know, who's, be, who's got small baby and she's tired and she falls asleep. And there's all sorts of noises going on around her, but she's still fast asleep. But the moment that baby starts crying, she suddenly, you know, she suddenly springs to life. And that is exactly <laughs> yeah. how the Lord responded as well, that he wasn't, he wasn't awoken by the boat being tossed here and there. But as soon as the disciples cried out to him, it was like, a, like you rightly said, he cares. Because yeah. as soon as he heard those voices, then he woke up. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> and then yeah. he took action. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So they were afraid, very afraid in the storm. But it says after he stilled the storm, they were terrified <laughs> of this. You know, it's almost like they were terrified of Jesus. They were so, you know, amazed at how goodness he's got power over human, oh, not mm. human nature, sorry, over nature itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, Pastor. And Pastor, one interesting thing I picked up about that as well is that um, you know we we um, as Christians, you know, that uh, we we pray for um, discernment because uh, one of the commentators was saying the way in which the Lord rebuked the storm was the same way that He sometimes rebuked demonic activity as yes, well. Yeah. So it was the same way that sometimes you know 
the, the, the enemy tries to get in behind nature and he masks his activities behind nature. And, um, you know, they, they were relating that sometimes to our own lives as well, that sometimes there are certain areas where we might be struggling with and we think, well, it's, it's the course of nature, it's the course of nature. But um, when, we, when we face this situation, the same way that the disciples cried out to the Lord and, you know, he came and he intervened and he rebuked the storm. It's the same way. We're not to be afraid of these things. We don't have mm. to be afraid. Once he has spoken to us, he's given us his word, which we, we are reading here. We yeah. take confidence in that. We, we put our faith in that and in him. And then yes. when we face these situations, whether we know how to deal with them or not, yeah. We yeah. always can trust him to intervene on our behalf. Yes, we should never be afraid. I think that's the theme of these encounters. Do not be afraid, whatever you might face. And we've just faced, you know, the storm, a, a physical storm. Um, you could think of, you know, well, all these um, situations we might face. Now we're going to, he's facing this demonic activity, fierce mm. demonic activity in the, the, the man demon possessed in the gadarenes and um it says you know that we we hear that there's there's a legion of demons in this guy nobody could subdue him he even tore chains and and manacles off he he and so a very frightening kind of situation would be extremely frightening for any human being um but here again we have jesus you know he doesn't move he he confronts he said you know, and shows he has power over over the devil himself and all of his demons, a whole legion of them. And we're not to be afraid. We're not to be afraid. And I think there's so much we could uh, talk about here. But let me first say, you, you know, th there's no demonic situation that, that, that you need, listener, ever be afraid of in Christ Jesus. You are protected completely. The devil himself cannot... Um, take you, cannot snatch you from God. You're in the palm of his hand, the Bible says. And um, in Christ, we're completely safe from the devil. It says even he must flee from us as we submit to God, resist the devil. And the Bible says he must flee. Isn't it wonderful to, to know there's no situation that we can need be afraid of in life. We think of, you know, before I was a Christian, a lot of the sort of most frightening things that might come at us in life and through some of the movies and things we you know kind of these horror movies and demonic mm. sort of um situations and yet we we need not be afraid of any of that in christ wouldn't you say absolutely yes pastor I, I, and i think we, we can only you know keep emphasizing that that um yeah. you know in all in all of these like if you like um encounters where the lord is showing that he is lord of all and he's master of all that what he that if you like the message that he's getting across to us is that in him in christ we, we never need to be afraid of any of these situations that we face mm -hmm. in life we face the situations but with him you know he caught he will cause us to be victorious and, and to overcome in every single one of these type of situations mm -hmm. and so uh, you know it's like it, it very much in this in encounter that we're looking at here this demon possessed man who actually you know he comes to the lord actually <laughs> it's not it's not as though the lord went to him he actually came to the lord yeah and um it's 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 very much a, a case of um you know the lord demonstrating that he has authority over over demonic activity and uh, you know one of the things I, I was reading about is like this there was a superstitious belief at that time when you if you knew someone's name that you had authority over them i don't know whether you came across that and so when the demons come came and they cried out you know jesus son of the most high god they were what they were really trying to do they were, they were trying to resist you know the lord driving them out and oh, that yeah. was what they were trying to do. They were trying to play some sort of a game like, well, we know who you are, we know your name. Yes, and in yes. that way, it's kind of like we know everything there is to know about you, so you don't have authority over us. But, um, you know, the, the Lord you know, didn't have it. He wasn't playing any games, didn't have any of that. And, um, you know, he cast, you know, these, these demons out. And even when they said legion, you know, they didn't want to reveal their, their identity because they believed in that myth as well. So they were yeah. trying to intimidate the Lord. I said, there's many of us here. You know, there's too many for you to, yes. you know, to overcome. Yeah. But he showed his authority. They even had to beg him to where we, we could, can we go into this way? Can we yes. do this? Yeah. So they, it, it, in one sense, they were, they were pleading with him. They were, pre but at the end of the day, what he was showing was that he had authority over them. Yes. And um, he, he, they were only allowed to do what he allowed them to do. And, um, you know, we're, we're reading in Colossians 2.15 that, you know, he made, he, God has triumphed over every demonic activity, over every demonic power. Yes, and he's made a spectacle yes. of them. He has, he has uh, removed all their powers and shown that he is the Lord of all. 
and, and the again, next yes yeah and yeah. the next level and an important progression from that is uh, he gives us that yes. same authority yeah. he gives us his authority to yeah. also cast out demons and cast out yeah. the demonic forces and to have yeah. power over the de demonic realm so not Absolutely. only are we just sort of protected and if you like enclosed from their uh, power but we have power over them to cast them out as well you know that's part of the great commission go commission, preach yeah. the good news and these signs shall follow you you will yes. cast out demons you will heal yes. the sick pretty amazing yeah. But yes, yes, it's true. I was reading in my commentary, David Pawson, uh, who's from a farming background, and he related a story where at a farm, and he, he knew the farming community, uh, there was some deliverance going on for somebody who was um, obviously demon-possessed and what have you, and, and, and there was a commotion in the farm. And they, they went out to the farmyard, and actually the pigs in the pen, this, this was a true story, were... were had started to savagely attack each other and were biting chunks out of each other. So awful that the farmer had to get his gun and shoot the pigs. I mean, it's not a very nice story to relate, but just saying that, you know, these things are real, these sort of yes. demonic powers, but praise God, we're safe in Christ. Nothing can harm us. Um, we need to, you know, we need to make, we need to stand mind in faith yeah, and resist the, yeah. the, the enemy because we can be, and we, you were talking about this earlier with myself, you know, we can be buffeted and, and, and if you like distracted and, and diverted and stopped in, in our mission through mm. fear of the demonic unnecessarily. Yeah. Should, isn't that true? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Pastor. Really. It's like you know, the, like um, Joel was saying earlier. Joel mentioned this earlier this this morning, didn't he? When he was saying that, um, he he come to realize that a lot of the times, you know, when he faces these these kind of challenges, and uh, it's the devil shouting, and he's learned that that's what he can do. He can try to intimidate us. Yeah. You know, he can try to lie and deceive us into being afraid, into not trusting God, into walking in unbelief and doubt. You know, God is saying one thing, we believe something opposite to that. That's what he does. And Joel was saying, you know, this morning, I was really encouraging with us. And I just, it's all, it's, it's all the shouting, it's all just noise. Yeah. And, um, and he's learning how to, you know, to shut that out and to yeah. just to keep, you know, we keep focusing on the Lord, on his word and in on, on obedience and in faith. And that's what we, what we don't want to do is to give the devil those inroads of uh, deceit and, um, you know, and lying and to bring fear into our hearts and to bring you know deception because those things they cause us to be distracted like you rightly said and then we're not focusing on what the call of God on our life and on our, on our ministry and the things that the good works that God has created us for to do in his name and to walk in his power like you rightly said when we get to the end of Mark's gospel that's what Jesus said he says he's given you that offer he's given us the authority he's given us the power and he said he made a declaration didn't he that these signs will follow those who believe in my name he said yeah. they will cast out. He said we will, that was the first thing. He said they would cast out devils. Yes. And the disciples would have believed that. They would have seen that. He did mm. that. And they would say, yes, yes, we've seen him do that. He we've, said this yes. and he's done this. And if he's saying that we're going to do the same thing, they would have had that faith in him. Yeah. Not in ourselves, not in anything, but in him, in Christ alone. They would have had that confidence that we are called to do the same as well. Yeah, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. And yeah, interesting, you know, that the, the 2,000 pigs were... Were, were killed, you know, they were drowned. Um, it just goes to show as well the value that God puts on a human being, a human mm -hmm. soul, you know, much more even than a, a 2,000 pigs. And, and, and you know, I, I love the way that when he, when he addressed that demon, um, the first thing that Jesus said to him was, uh, um, what was it now? Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Mm. You know, it, it wasn't, he wasn't even, he, he was just concerned about the man, wasn't he? Yes. You know, of freeing him. He had that compassion. Come out of this man. Absolutely. Leave this yes, man the, alone. Get out of my, my, my child, my man, you know, this man. Uh, that, yeah, that was yes. his concern. And he, he set him free. And then, you know, he yes. was clothed, it says. I mean, the man was naked and scratched. And so, so mm. they looked after him. They clothed him. He was, you know, he was, Re restored and then jesus said to him you know because the man said oh i'm gonna come with you thank you you know let me <laughs> come with you he said look go home to your family tell mm. them what what god has done for you um you know there's a lot we could go into there but i don't think we've, we've got to enough time <laughs> really but, but uh wonderful wonderful uh story so then it says he crossed over again and and we have again a large crowd 
pressing around him. It says that, it, it particularly says that they were pressing around him and, and gathering around him. Now, first we hear that Jairus, the synagogue ruler, so we've got a, a very important man in the community. He came and, and he, you know, fell before Jesus at his, on his knees before him. Interestingly, the demon-possessed guy came and, and before Jesus. And here we have a man putting his faith in Jesus and says, my little daughter is dying. You know, he, he's desperate. My little daughter. You know, you can, you can hear the, the, the love for his daughter, the, the desperation. Uh, and, and he's come to Jesus for, and, and it says, so Jesus went with him. It's kind of almost like immediately he went with him. Uh, he didn't say anything. He just followed him. So that's the first we hear. We don't hear anything else. We, we just get this picture. My daughter's dying. Please, my little daughter. And, and it says Jesus went with him straight away. So we've got a huge crowd. And this guy says, and, and then it says a large crowd followed, pressed around him. So press him. You can think of the, you know, <laughs> well, I wonder what that's like when they're pressing on you and you're trying to get somewhere. You know, you're being buffeted, touched, pushed. And it says that the woman came who was subject to bleeding, incurable, had many doctors, spent everything she had, and it only got worse. And, and she heard about Jesus. And it says she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. If I can just get to him, touch him, I will be healed. Wow. And, 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 and she did. And it says immediately the bleeding stopped. And, and she felt in her body, she obviously felt something of the power of the healing. And it says, at, once, at the same time, Jesus realized power had gone from him. So we've got this whole, his power had gone from him to her. His power, yes. his supernatural, divine power was given to her uh, in this. And yet everyone was touching him. Pressing against him, <laughs> pushing on him. And even the disciples said, how can you say who touched me? Or well, everyone's touching you. But no, <laughs> power had gone to her and her alone. Something had happened. Yeah. Um, what, what do you make of this uh, yeah. situation? It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing, Pastor. And it's like, you know, one, one, what we're, we're, we're learning here is that, we, you know, we cannot put Jesus in a box. You know, the way that, um, you know, as Christians, you know, we, we sometimes, the way that we express our faith in God is different. So you, you have, you know, the, the, the synagogue ruler Jairus here, he's saying to Jesus, you know, you come, please come and, and heal my daughter. So he's got the, the faith of, to believe that if Jesus can come to his house and I don't know maybe to pray for her, lay your hands on her, whatever he's expecting Jesus to do, that his daughter will be made well. But it's a faith. And like you rightly said, Jesus, Jesus does not question his faith. He just, he just he says, OK, I'm going. This man has got a faith, whatever which way, whatever kind of faith he wants to call. It, he's got faith in me. I'm going with him. And it's different from the centurion who said, look, you don't even have to come to my house, Lord. You know, just say the word. You know, the centurion who, was even, who wasn't even a Jew, who was a Gentile, he just said, say the word, the Lord, and my servant will be healed. And what Jesus marveled, he said, wow, I've never seen such great faith in the whole of Israel. Mm. But at the same time, Jesus did not um, in any way, he didn't uh, dishonor the faith of, of the ruler. He just said, well, he's got faith for me to go to his house, I'll go to his house. And the same way with this woman with the issue of blood as well. She had faith as well to say, if I could just touch a part of his of his outer clothing, you know, I'll be healed. Yes, and, uh, yes. You know, she was still, you know, Jesus. Even though, you know, in one sense, that's not true. There's, there's no, there was no power in his clothing, really. <laughs> the power was in, is it was in the, the the Christ Himself, not in his clothing. But he didn't dishonor that. He, he still pressed through because we can't go into all the detail about how she was ceremoniously unclean and all that sort of thing. But she still had that faith. To say, if I can just touch that bit of his clothing, I'll be made ill. And I, it's an I encouragement to us that we don't have to have you know, the faith of, you know, we might know some great men and women of God. We think, oh, I'm never going to have that kind of faith. You just is never going to use me. No, 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 no. Whatever faith you have in the Lord, no matter what type of faith it is, believe in him. God, he's, a, like you said before, he's a compassionate, he's a generous and he's a loving God. He's not going to turn us away and say, oh, no, your faith isn't good enough. Look at the centurion. He, no, no, no. He will honor that faith no matter what it's let's be encouraged i'm really encouraged when i read that i that love that Pastor Akin. Faith, yeah yes. <laughs> I, I didn't think of that so many different expressions of faith and yet jesus was honoring all of them you know come to my house you don't need to come to my house <laughs> i want to touch you yeah i don't need to touch you you know and and yet jesus yes that's so good i love that and um i i, I want to you know just quickly 
look at this aspect of the crowd. You know, all of, we mm. have this crowd there. They're, they're there to see Jesus, to see what he's doing. They're all around him. They're buffeting him. They're touching him. They're speaking. They're shouting. Who knows what they're doing? And, and the application here, and yet the one lady, and, and you've got the Jairus who said come, but one lady, her touch was mm. different. She touched him with, with intention, with, with, with faith, and, and with, with a desperation wanting to get something from Jesus, and she got it, and she got more probably than she even dreamt of. And, and, and I think, you know, it's the same in our lives today. When, when we think of, you know, going to Jesus, he does say, you know, when we gather together, uh, we know that he's with us wherever we go, and by faith we can ask him for whatever. He says, though, you know, where, where you, when you gather together, you know, I'm there in a special way. They're, they're, these are special gatherings when two or three, and we think of church, you know, and, and I think of people going to church. We can go to church for many reasons, and, yeah. and not necessarily the right reasons. We can go to church and not have an encounter with Jesus because we don't necessarily want one. We're not trying, you know, we're not going to him for we could go to church to see our friends. We could go to church, you know, to wear our new clothes and, and, and show everyone, you know, our, our church clothes. Maybe we just want to get out. Maybe we want to hear a nice talk. Maybe we like the music. But if we go to, to, to encounter Jesus and if you come and think, I want something from you, God, and I'm going to reach out and grab it. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to, you will encounter something. You will receive, you know, he will give you power, give you healing, give you something of himself, give you his righteousness so that you feel washed, clean, uh, renewed, strengthened. You know, this is how we come and we receive from God. So yes. let's make sure that every time we come, you know, we're expecting. Yes, uh, my wife's book, Come With Expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. the, the, the promise, one of the wonderful promises in the Bible, it says, draw near to God and he will, he yes. will, he will yes. draw near to you. You know, he will come and he'll, he'll, you'll encounter him. He'll yes. touch you. He'll do yeah. something for you. <laughs> you know, when, when you when you draw near to God, you, you, you get changed. If you, yeah, if you come next to, you know, the, the holy, wonderful creator of the universe, you know, something happens in your life. So, Leah, let's make sure that we always come with that expectation. And we can Thank be you. sure we will receive whatever we need. Absolutely. That's my little preach for that. <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. Wow. Good preaching, Pastor Ian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so we, we she received power went from him. It's interesting, you know, it wasn't that it wasn't her strength was renewed, but his power went into her. And and and, and isn't that great? You know, his yes. power comes into us. Absolutely, yes. He, he felt it the power. And she was freed, set free mm. from her suffering. Yes. Now, that's that's God, isn't it? You know, the, the, mm. the, the Bible says that you know, the devil, he comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. But he came that we may have life and have it in abundance. That's what he says in John 10, 10. And that, you know, like you rightly said about the, the man, demon possessed man, Jesus wanted to set him free, wanted to transform his life so that he could be, you know, the man created in the image and likeness of God. And he was sent on his mission, wasn't he? Go and preach the gospel. You don't have to follow me. You don't have to stay with me. And, you know, but just go and, you know, go and tell people what I've done. And now he's freed this woman as well. And he's, you know, he called her, you know, he called her daughter, you know, because maybe what she, she might have been feeling a bit guilty about what she had done because she wasn't supposed to, you know, go out and be amongst people in her oh, condition. Yes, but, you yes. know, so, but he came to reassure her that, no, yeah. you know, your faith has made you well. He called her daughter and he called her and he, and maybe he wanted to reassure her as well that she had been healed because maybe she would have gone away and the enemy would have started saying, oh, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have touched him. You know, when he called you out, he didn't go. So he came to, I, I think he really came not to, to embarrass her, but he came to affirm the fact that, you know, she was a daughter and she had been set free and that healing was real and that she didn't have to doubt it and that, um, you know, she had touched him by faith and he had responded to that. So Wonderful. it's just, it's just oh, God's compassion that. again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And then we come, you know, we're, we're back to, to this Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Now we, we, we have the encounter with, if you like, man's final enemy, death. You know, the, 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 the friends come and said, don't bother him anymore. She, I'm sorry, she's dead. 
you know, and, and I love the fact, going on from what you're saying about Jesus' compassion, it's not like he's, he sort of folds his arms and says, mm, right, I see what he does here. They've said she's dead. But he, he, he's seen his faith already, and he quickly says almost, you know, don't be afraid, just believe. I'm here. You know, they, they're saying dead, but look, I've seen your faith. And now he's encouraging him. He's adding to his faith. He's not sort of standing back and sort of saying, oh, right, see, see what he does now uh, i love that is again the compassion there <laughs> he says just believe continue to believe as you have started and 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 they go you know he clears out the crowd why all this commotion and wailing <laughs> interestingly it's fine they're all you know oh, 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 I, I can't imagine what they're doing and the crowds <laughs> are there and and then it says when when jesus said she's only asleep it says mm. they laughed at him so, yes. I mean, I think it shows they're, they're kind of wailing and crying. Wasn't that um, deep or sincere? Because <laughs> if they can turn around immediately and start laughing from crying. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Yeah, but, but he uses that expression, she's only asleep. And that, that only being asleep is often used of the saints when we do, in fact, die yes. because... Yeah. In, we we, yes. we 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 never die in Christ. Yeah, yeah. There is a sort of there's just a sleeping before we enter into you know yes. heaven for eternity. But he says wow, she, yes, she, true, she's yes. just asleep. And then it's interesting. He puts out all of the the wailers and the laughers, doesn't he? And and sometimes <laughs> you know we do have to. We need to, to to create an atmosphere of faith. Mm. And yes. and and we we read in other parts of the gospels didn't we that you know where there's no faith it's it's actually mm. difficult for miracles to happen because yes. unbelief can can kind of come against them so I, I like you know it says he puts out all of those and he just takes the the mother and father and the disciples and then talking about that compassion again yeah. he takes the little girl's hand you know she's lying mm. there yes. he takes her hand and he yeah. says talitha kum little girl mm get up and mm. immediately she stood up and and death mm. was defeated wow. you know even Amazing. death yes uh, even the, death. the final wow. enemy <laughs> Gosh. it's like yes god is i mean the lord jesus christ is, is he's just manifested his lordship now over you know whatever it is that we could that could cause us to be anxious whatever it is that we could cause us to be afraid mm. not to have faith in god he, he's just showing that look he, he, i am lord of all of those things and you can put your your complete and total trust in me i mean you could put your your, your yourself in jairus's position when um, you know he called the lord and in that desperate situation when the lord was coming he would have been so excited that like yes the lord's on his way to my house now and he would almost be like one trying to push the crowd out of the way no get out of the way we've got to get home you no know, once the lord gets yeah. home, my daughter will be healed and then this woman comes and then the lord stops and he's like oh what's going on you know these things are being delayed i need to get this man yes. to my house to heal mm. my daughter yeah. And then when the news comes, like you rightly said to say, oh, your daughter's dead, he would have been like, oh, you know, maybe. But then the Lord intervenes straight away, like you rightly said, to encourage him. And it's an, another thing again about, you know, sometimes we might think that things are being delayed. The Lord is not, he hasn't turned up in time. He hasn't changed things. He hasn't turned up when we think he will. But, you know, that, that d d delay, it was to show again that he was Lord even over death. Because maybe if he'd healed the girl, it would have been, oh, you know, we know Jesus the healer. You know, he's been healing people. Oh, yes. with but now he's shown another dimension of his power that uh, had, had probably hadn't been seen up until that point in time, but he is even Lord over death. Hallelujah. Wow, brilliant. an amazing brilliant. saviour. Yes. Yeah, that's, that, that's a great place to finish, I think. And, uh, <laughs> you know, listeners, I hope you're encouraged. The, our Lord, you know, he's your Lord. He's Lord over even death. There's nothing you need ever be afraid of. What can mortal man do to you? What can even the, um, you know, the the the... the the weather and um, mm. nature do to you what can the demonic forces do you belong to Christ and uh, isn't it reassuring and wonderful uh, yeah well thank you everyone for joining us and um, lovely to see friends in America joining us uh, great to have you with us Tom and uh, Pup Pastor Sid Doyle, uh, Sid Doyle, one of the founders of this church. Great to have you. We miss you too, <laughs> Sid and Liz. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, let's just, uh, I'm going to give thanks for uh, what God has shown us today. Lord, we thank you for these wonderful examples of you being Lord over 
any and every situation we might encounter. Right now, I pray you'd encourage every person connected, listening, and whatever their need may be, that they would reach out to you, reach out, touch you for help in whatever we might be experiencing, they might be experiencing. Meet their every need, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Aki, thanks so much again. Great to have you. Thanks for joining us, um, Thank dear friends. And we'll see you next week, if not before. God bless you. Have a great week. Okay. Bye. God bless everyone. Good night. Good night.